I'm glad you've joined us for this Monday Thursday meditation and worship experience. We've been together along this Lenten journey. Forty days is Lent, or forty-six if you count the Sundays. And each week, a different theme. Most years, the season of Lent is about our spiritual journey. But this Lent, I've said elsewhere, this is the Lentiest Lent I've ever Lented. And by that I mean because of the stay at home and, and being uh, not able to be with others and all of the coronavirus um, pieces of this time, it has involved spiritual but also social, psychological, economic, even political, it is existential. During the season of Lent, I've heard us say things to one another like, boy, when this is all over with, I'm going to take some of the things I've learned and use them in the future. Or at other times we'll say, I'll be like a bird that is released from a cage. Or other times, but one thing I've learned during this season is I'm not going to do things the way I did before. I'm going to change. Do people change? Sometimes we're more charitable about that answer than others, but Jesus changed me. And Jesus is shaping me in this season. Through all of these weeks, which began with Jesus going into the wilderness, with Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night and hearing that he must be born again to have new birth. And the woman encountered at the well who asked, I want this water that would be water to never thirst again. Or the man born blind when Jesus is said, says the words, I am the light of the world. I once was lost, but now I'm found, said the hymn writer. I was blind, but now I see. Or Nicodemus, or I'm sorry, or Lazarus and his sisters who said to Jesus, if you had just been here. And Jesus asked the question, do you not know that I am the resurrection and the life? Or last Sunday, Palm Sunday, Jesus entering into Jerusalem, which we know is the beginning of the end. Or maybe it's just the end of the beginning. So join me as we go behind this table, a table laden with symbols. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and Easter Sunday are rich in symbols that we also share with our Jewish heritage. Jesus was with his friends at that Last Supper, and he took a towel and a, a water pitcher and a basin, and he stooped down to wash the feet of his disciples. And of course, Peter protested when Jesus was washing his feet, he said, Wash all of me. Jesus was quick to say, what I have done is sufficient. But Peter, you're not all clean. You will deny me. No, 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 says Peter. You will deny that you know me. A purse with pieces of silver, 30 pieces of silver. After the disciples' feet are washed, Jesus says, one of you will betray me. And they protest, no, we will not betray you. Who is it? Is it me? Betrayal. It said that everyone 
as their price. What's your price? The familiar symbols of the bread and the cup. The bread is taken, blessed, broken, and given as Jesus, as you and I. For we partake in the bread. The cup which is also taken and blessed and drunk and as Jesus says, poured out for many. After they had shared in this meal, they went out from there to the Mount of Olives and to the Garden of Gethsemane. I have a stone, a rock actually, that one of our members of our church brought back from the Holy Land. In fact, this is authentically from Gethsemane. I know that because it says Gethsemane on it, which makes me smile. A heavy rock. It makes me wonder if, if I rode on the rocks that I carry in my life, the heavy burdens. What would I write? A burden that I'm struggling to carry. Well, Jesus entered the garden. The first thing he did was invite his friends to pray with him. And then he went off by himself and he prayed for them, for you and for me. Lord, may they be strong. May they may not get may they not give in to temptation. And then he returned to check up on the disciples, and he was sad. For they had fallen asleep. He roused them, returned again, and he prayed, Lord, if it be possible, may this cup which I am facing be set aside, that I not drink from it. It reminds me of a thought, maybe Jesus is thinking, if I only had more time with my followers, like a school teacher at the end of a school year might say, if I only had another month, two months with these students. Or you might say, in a job that's coming to an end, if I only could go back to the beginning and do things differently. But Jesus took God's will and claimed it and said, Lord, if it is your will, be glorified. And finally, the crown of thorns. Every thorn on this crown pressed into the head of Christ and endured until his final words upon the cross, it is finished. So tomorrow on Good Friday, we'll gather again and worship around the theme of Jesus on the cross. And I invite you to join us for that meditation. And especially to remember these closing words of Jesus to his friends when they were all together. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. May others, when they see you, say, you are known as the people of love. Reach out to one another and share your love with them.